Who's that? Does anyone know who that is? You recognize that astronaut? That is Story Musgrave, and his mass is 80 kilograms. Now, um, this is another picture of Story Musgrave out next to the space shuttle. In this picture, what is Story's mass? 80 kilograms. That never changes. What's his weight? What's his weight? He's, if you read in the paper, he's floating around weightless. Weightless. If you watch TV, he's floating weightless. His weight is 648 newtons. But wait a minute, Greg. He's floating there. His weight, his true weight, is 648 newtons. Let me explain how I got that number. If you were to look at the Earth from the moon, assuming that we actually went there and didn't fake the whole thing, <laughs> which of those circles represents the orbit of the, of the space shuttle? Yeah, the white one. We don't go very far from home. Folks, we actually have a space shuttle uh, scientist, an astronaut, in this building. Uh, a member of our faculty, Lauren Acton, was a, a mission specialist on the space shuttle. Uh, and now he, he teaches for us. And I went and I asked him, I said, how high you go? He said, well, about 400 miles. Okay? So, if we use Murican units, the radius of the Earth is about 4,000 miles. If they go another 400 miles above the surface of the Earth, they're going an extra 10% away from the center of the Earth. Now, if we look at Story Musgrave standing on a scale in his bathroom at home, the Earth's gravitational field there is 9.8 newtons for each kilogram. That gives him a weight force, a true weight, of 784 newtons. Now, if we look at him in the space shuttle, just a little bit higher a little bit further from the center of the Earth, the gravitational field is weaker out there. But not that much weaker. It's 8.1 instead of 9.8. And that's where I got the, the weight force of 648 newtons. But wait a minute, Greg. I saw him floating. Yes, he appeared to be weightless. His apparent weight was zero. And that's what we need to talk about is the difference between true weight and apparent weight. And we're going to do that with this bathroom scale. If I stand on this scale, oh my goodness. <laughs> Ouch. Uh, if I stand on that scale, I can draw a free body diagram for me. There's the earth pulling down on me. There's a scale pushing up on me. I can also draw a free body diagram for the scale. There's the Earth pulling down on the scale, not much because it's got a small mass. I'm pushing down on the scale, and the, the floor is pushing up on the scale. Now, folks, there are five forces up there. But the scale is actually only reading one of those five forces. Tell your neighbor which one it is. Which of those five forces is being read by the scale? Okay. I'll give you a hint. The scale can only read a force that acts on the scale. So it has to be one of these three over here. Tell your neighbor which one it is. Did you get that one there? Good. How hard do you push down on the scale is what it measures. Now by Newton's third law, this force has to always, always, always be the same magnitude as that force. Now, we give some names. This force we call the apparent weight. This gravitational force we call the true weight. This force can only be changed by diet or exercise. Believe me, if there's another way, I would have, would have tried. 
But the apparent weight is how hard you're pushing on the scale. And I can make that whatever I want it to be. I can change that all over the map. Okay? That's the apparent weight. Now, in summary, the apparent weight is just the reading of the bathroom scale, or it's equal to the normal force uh, of the scale pushing up on your feet. In practice, what we're going to find is the apparent weight is anything keeping you from free fall. Whatever force is keeping you from free fall. If I'm holding on to a bar, like a, a monkey bar, and my feet aren't touching the ground, it would be the tension force of the bar pulling up on me. Okay? Whatever keeps me from free fall. And it's equal to my true weight in the special case where I have no acceleration. If I stand here calmly, that number there also represents my true weight. And that's why we buy scales. Okay? But I can also get a different number by accelerating. Well, let's look at an acceleration in an elevator. First of all, let's go up in that elevator at a constant velocity. Let's say 300 meters per second, but it's a constant 300 meters per second. In that case, the forces on me, my true weight and my apparent weight, have to be the same. Now, we'll use me as an example. And my true weight is 200 and something. Let's say 230 to be polite to be uh, kind to Greg, okay, 230 pounds. Now, I wish it were news. Anyway, this would also be 230. Now, what if that elevator had an acceleration upward? Now remember, this could either be an elevator that is moving up and speeding up, or an elevator that is moving down and slowing down. You could be uh, going into the elevator at the lobby and hit the button for the 10th floor. And as you take off, this would happen. Or you could be going down to the lobby and just as you arrive, this could be happening. Either way, my true weight would be 230, but my apparent weight is going to be bigger than 230. And that's how I'm going to feel, okay? The apparent weight tells me how hard the floor is pushing up on me. Well, normally I interpret that how hard the floor is pushing up on me as how much I ate, okay? So when I'm in this situation, I feel like, oh, I shouldn't have eaten those Big Macs. Oh, man. On the other hand, when the acceleration is down, like you're arriving at the 10th floor and it's slowing down to get there, Okay, or you get in at the 10th floor and you hit the button for the lobby and the floor falls out from under you. In either of those cases, my weight would be 230, but my apparent weight would be much less. And you feel that. As that floor is falling out from under you, you feel lighter. You feel like, whoa, I could dance all night. This is great. In fact, we could make a weight loss program as long as you had people that weren't that bright, and you just say, hey, I'm gonna make you feel light. Just put them in an elevator. Give them an acceleration down. You know, it lasts for a while and then it wears off. <laughs> then we're gonna to have to do it again, okay? Now, this is the kind of homework you have for Wednesday. You're riding down in an elevator carrying a 20 kilogram package in your arms. As the elevator gets to your floor, it slows down with an acceleration of two meters per second every second. What's the apparent weight of the packet? With your neighbor, see if you can figure that out.
In the interest of time, let's do this together. You are moving down, but what's more important is you are slowing down. So your acceleration vector is up, and it has magnitude of two meters per second every second. Now if I draw a free body diagram for the package, the first force I put on is the true force, I'm uh, sorry, the true weight, the gravitational force, and that's going to be the mass times g, uh, 20 kilograms times 9.8, call it 10 newtons for each kilogram, 200 newtons. Now, the only other force acting on this package is you pushing up with a normal force. This is equal in magnitude to the force by the package down on your arm. This is how heavy the package is going to appear to be. This is the apparent weight. Whereas this would be the true weight. Now, I know that the apparent weight has to be bigger than the true weight because this diagram has to scream up. The question is how much bigger? How loud should that scream? And that answer always comes from Newton's second law, F net equals MA. I've got a 20 kilogram package accelerating at two meters per second per second up. My diagram has to scream up by 40 newtons. That means this normal force must be 240 newtons, and that will be the apparent weight of the package. That will be how heavy it feels. Now folks, notice, I did not pull out a formula for apparent weight. There is no formula for apparent weight in the book. There is no formula on the exam. You use Newton's second law, to find the apparent weight. Now let's look at this special case where the acceleration is down and it's 9.8 meters per second per second. That's free fall. If I look at the free body diagram, how big should that normal force be if I'm in free fall? Zero. Okay. See that man go up? Okay. Isn't that clever? <laughs> Have any of you been on the, the Tower of Terror at, uh, at Disney World? Okay. They've got this terrible tower that's 13 stories high, and it's all spooky and everything. And you go in, and there's this uh, elevator cage that has 13 seats. And then they take you up through this haunted house and up to the 13th floor, and then they open up this door, this bay door that allows you to see Orlando, and they open up a bunch of bay doors below so you can keep seeing Orlando. And then they just drop you. And I'm here to tell you that when they drop you, you feel nothing under your seat but wet. <laughs> it's spooky. Okay. Now, you've, uh, are you weightless? No, your weight force is about to kill you. Okay, you're just apparently weightless. Now, You've all seen this movie, right? Well, folks, as uh, you can probably tell, the Aquarius isn't much bigger than a couple of telephone booths. The uh, skin of the land in some places is only as as thick as a couple of uh, layers of tin foil, and that's all that protects us from the vacuum. Okay. Now. The question I have is, how did they film that? Did they go to Hollywood and put them in a room and punch the button and turn off gravity? No, how did they do it? They put them in a plane called the Vomit Comet. Now I have a video here of some of our MSU undergrads in the Vomit Comet. And what we would experience zero G came closer. Not knowing what we were going to experience, some of us got nervous, but overall, everyone was excited. It was time. 
we were told to sit on the floor for the 10,000 foot climb. During the climb, we all experienced 2G. It felt exactly like the Gravitron at the State Fair, except after 30 seconds, the floor would fall out from underneath your body and you would float up to the ceiling, bounce off of the ceiling to a wall or the floor and just keep bouncing off things until the plane came out of the dive and started another 2G climb. This was repeated 40 times. At the very end of each flight, the pilot would simulate what it would be like to walk on the moon and on Mars. I have to admit, push-ups are a lot easier on the moon than on Earth. How many times did you vomit on the vomit? Come Three bags. Too much information. So, the vomit comet just launches itself and then goes into free fall. Just like the space shuttle is falling around the Earth and just missing it, the vomit comet is like a falling elevator. Uh, Car. Okay, we'll talk more about this. You're clearly ready to go. <laughs> we'll talk more about it on Wednesday. It's still Monday.